The Rainbow Dash presents Somewhere Only We Know. Today the sky is as bright blue as a bird's egg, and I am as forgetful as always. There's no gray clouds anywhere, which I'm about to be in big trouble for with my boss, because we had gray clouds scheduled today. I'd like it to just be whatever weather I feel like, but there's a system in place, and if I shake it up, then I get written up. Uh, but that aside, I got me some awesome wings. I don't know what I'd do without them. I couldn't be on the weather teams anymore, that's for sure. I'd probably have to get a job working at some kind of chain retail store, selling sweaters and toasters to little old ladies. I tried to do a good job, but the little old ladies wouldn't know what they want, and they'd blame me for it. So really, I'm happier with my government job. Well, besides, I'm a really good flyer anyway. That's why they call me Rainbow Dash, because I dash and I've got rainbows on my head and on my butt. One time I did fall, though. Okay, a lot of times I've fallen, but so far it hasn't killed me. One or two comas, the occasional concussion, and one time I did go into the light. But I went back again when I realized I forgot to turn off the oven. So yeah, good times for Rainbow Dash. Today I'm gonna hang out with my friend, so I shake my bright blue butt on down to Twilight's library. She's always giving us crap, but I know she's stressed out from school and it makes her feel better to have someone to talk to. Pinky's there too, and she's like, Rainbow Dash, how is your leg? And she asked me this because my leg is once again friggin' broken. Of course, I remember the last time I went in for surgery, some pony didn't exactly uphold the Hippocratic Oath. So I'm like, it's fine. So we hang out for a while, and then it turns out that I've been dreaming my entire life. My eyes pop open wide to the sound of an orangutan in a fine business suit banging a couple of cymbals together. And he's screaming, wake up, in his crazy monkey language. And I'm like, holy frig, I'm up, I'm up. I hate the friggin' morning wake-up song. One of these days I'm gonna die from a heart attack. About a year ago I used to fight this crap. They'd bang the cymbals and I'd be gone. Fence gates, hedges, walls, everything totally bypassed as I made a beeline for any point in space most opposite to the cymbals. I used to drag like five orangutans behind me, them hanging on for dear life as I tore down the streets in blind terror. I don't get ridden a whole lot, which is kinda sad admittedly because Mr. Jingles bought me for his kids. His son, Flibbers, wanted to name me Thunder Crash, Destroyer of Worlds. The daughter, Wanda, wanted to name me Rainbow Dancer, Queen of Petunias. Uh, Mr. Jingles compromised with Rainbow Dash. He later added Queen of Pointless Destruction, after they'd had me a few weeks. Uh, there used to be other ponies living on the farm. Pinkie Pie had a stall right next to me a while ago. She was one of those horses that would do stuff like try to make the saddle fit too loose around her, so when the orangutans rode her, the saddle would slip and they'd fall down. And all things considered, though, she was a pretty fun roommate until the day she escaped. I was just hanging out, and then I noticed Pinkie Pie on the other side of the fence. Uh, there weren't any holes or anything, she was just over there, looking pretty darn happy. Then she was gone, ran off into the forest. I don't know what happened to her, but Mr. Jingles bought a gun and slept with the lights on for weeks. I used to pull cards and stuff with Twilight, too. She was always the boss pony, Alpha Mare Twilight. She'd be like, don't run so fast, you don't even know where we're going. And she'd be right! She was the smartest pony. I think they rent her out, though. She's been gone all week, and as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty much like forever. So I don't know if she's coming back at all. So, anyway, since I'm the only pony on the farm, they're possibly even the entire planet right now, Mr. Jingles hitches me to the carriage so I can carry him and his family down to the city today. This is kind of exciting for me, because for one thing, I never get trusted with this kind of job. They put blinders on me, so I have to listen to directions. If I don't, then I drive everyone off a cliff, and then Mr. Jingles gets really unhappy. Uh, the other thing is that there's always other ponies in the city, so that's always fun. Yeah, I think they're just trusting me to do this today because I broke my leg. So I'm really enthusiastic, but the horrible splitting pain keeps me from getting overexcited. Uh, I guess I probably should have kept an eye out for that gopher hole, but it's like hindsight is 2020, so what are you going to do? So they hook me up to the carriage, and away we go down the dirt road to the city. The sky is looking kind of gray today, but that's fine because it's not my fault. Mr. Jingles, his kids, and his wife are all coming along for the ride. I don't know where we're going, but Flibbers keeps touching Wanda's personal bubble, and Wanda keeps freaking out about it. Mom and Dad threaten them, but I don't understand most of their monkey language, so I just keep doing whatever. And we stop, and Mr. Jingles shouts over his shoulder at the kids. I just kind of hang out. Some butterflies are out there. It's kind of damp. I've got an itch on my nose. Uh, then we start moving again. Pretty soon we get to the city. There's all kinds of really tall buildings, and there's like a million pigeons. They're all perched on statues of dancing orangutans that spit out of their mouths. There's one or two statues of ponies doing something. Those are my favorite ones. Uh, eventually we get to our destination, and Wanda wants to feed me for being such a good pony. And I recognize those words, but Mr. Jingle says no. Uh, he gives some kind of explanation for why not, but whatever it is, it's probably not good enough. Anyway, they leave me alone, parked out there. I don't know where they're going, but I am pretty happy. 
There's lots of stuff to look at, although I've got these stupid blinders on my face. There's horses all over the place. Uh, most of them aren't doing anything interesting, but oh man, they're there. Suddenly, in the corner of my vision, I spot one of those flowery little carriages. You know, one of the ones that drive in circles around town. They give you a blanket, and the driver gives a little tour of neat landmarks around the city. The pony pulling it always has a bunch of little bows in her hair, uh, even if it's a stallion. It's so embarrassing. Uh, but sure enough, Rarity is pulling it. Mr. Jinkle sold Rarity, like, forever ago. I'm terrible with time. But she's just pulling that carriage around like nobody's business. She's all brushed, and she's got little bows. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it's her. I'm super excited. I'm like, I'm like, Rarity, hey, Rarity, 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 hey, Rarity, Rarity, I like your carriage, hey, Rarity. But she doesn't hear me. She turns the corner, and then she's gone. Yeah, I'll probably never see her again. So I'm just standing around for a while, and I do my best to count pigeons, but they won't hold still, and they keep flying away. Then suddenly, an evil creature attacks me from behind! I can't see it, but I just know it's one of those creepy, non-crested orangutan males from the alley. I kick with all of my might and self-defense, landing my hooves squarely on a bucket. There's a splash, and soon a very angry and damp Mr. Jingles is standing next to me. He doesn't say anything. I think we both know that it's his fault. He sets the bucket down in front of me, and it's still got some water on it. I accept his apology offering, and he leaves me alone again. After he leaves, I swear I could smell apples. And I turn my head, and oh my gosh, there's an apple cart, and Apple Jack and Big Macintosh are standing right next to me. Uh, they've seen better days, though. And impossible to determine length of time ago, there was a big zombie outbreak, but the disease only infected ponies. It didn't spread very much, but Apple Jack and her brother both caught it, and now they're zomblers. I'm like, hey guys! Uh, but all they do is groan and beg for brains. Really, she wasn't much of a conversationalist after the infection, and she had to be separated from us a lot. She developed kind of a biting problem, which is unsanitary. So I'm like, how are things going for you? I broke my leg, see? Hey! Hey! Hey, Rarity! Hey, Rarity! Oh my gosh, she's back! Hey, Rarity! Hey, Rarity! Rarity, I like your carriage! I like your carriage, Rarity! Hey, Rarity! Man, I think she's ignoring me. Applejack just mumbles something about brains. It's all she ever wants to talk about. So I'm like, yeah, I heard your brother got gelded. That sucks. Can he hear me? Tell him I'm sorry. I can't tell if Big Macintosh can hear me or not. He doesn't have a lower jaw right now, so he can't make, like, faces or anything to indicate, you know, if he's unhappy about that. If I were a stallion, I'd be pretty unhappy about that. So they leave, and I see Rarity two or three more times, until, finally, Mr. Jingles and his family come back. They untie me and pay for the damage I caused when I went to go talk to Rarity, and then we start our trip home. It rains. And when we get home, Mr. Jingles gives me some more water and some oats so I won't starve to death. He gives me a long look. A really long look. I don't know what his problem is, but I think he needs anger management, maybe. After he leaves, Wanda and Flivver sneak me apples for being a good pony. Those kids are awesome. So I got my food, and I got my water. Not a lot of life goals, but two out of three isn't bad. Uh, plus, I got to see or at least think about all of my friends today. So I lay down and go to bed, and that's when I dream about being in Ponyville again. Now I can fly around, and I even have a job, but I'm not doing it right now because work is lame. Technically, the sky can be as clear as cloudy as I want, with the only drawback being that I will get in a lot of trouble for breaking the schedule. Today, I'm just going to let the clouds sort themselves out, because I'm going to the farm to play with Applejack. She's not a zombie in Dreamland, so our conversations are less one-sided. We get together and throw stuff through our windows. I score the most points. So, the end.